ready for some good dish? Our ultimate pizza party. From the crispiest crust. You don't want soggy pizza. To the gooeyest cheeses. Come on, pizza with a pull. Make perfect pizza at home in your favorite cast iron or sheet pan. And Chef Rocco Despirito brings the heat. I'm here for it. With some low-carb meat lovers madness. I wouldn't even know that this was a cauliflower crust. Plus, a frozen pizza hack your family will love. I'm excited about this. That's next. Let's dish. The kitchen has always been the center of my world because life is more delicious when it's full of food and fun. <laughs> Everybody knows me as a culinary expert and food judge on television, but also I'm just a mom trying to get dinner on the table. From Hollywood to home, I bring Southern sweet and Caribbean heat, and I'm not afraid to stir the pot. Good food, good friends, good dish. Welcome to The Good Dish. Today we are delivering the deliciousness with our ultimate pizza party. I love the show. Oh, if you are a pizza lover, we have hacked the crispiest crust, the gooeyest cheeses, the toppings that will wow your friends and your family. You have come to the right spot. Stick around for some yummy bites. Pizzas, guys. Let's talk. Pizza, pizza. All right, let's kick it off. Pizza toppings. What's your favorite? Any veggie, but also I need, I need and I like a little salt and funk. So like I love the salt, tomato, huh? the broccoli, the <laughs> mushrooms, but the olives really do it for me. Nice. All right, veggie, salt, and funk. That's our new group. We should okay. do that. Okay. We should do that. Veggie, All right. salt, and funk. Veggie, salt, and funk. What about you? What's your yeah. topping? I, I'm easy. When, like, when everybody's like, what do we want on pizza? I really don't care. Red chili flakes, as long as it's spicy, I will eat mm. chicken, pepperoni. I'm easy when it comes to pizza. The crust, <laughs> the crust is the number one move for me. It's got to be like chewy and crusty and, and have that nice little bit of char, but not burnt. Mm. So what are the tricks to making the perfect pizza at home? Oh, wow. At home, is, so the, obviously, the, the reason that when we go to restaurants and eat like a wood-fired pizza, it's mm -hmm. so spectacular is because they're getting that oven to 800 degrees plus, which is unfortunately not something most home ovens <laughs> more. Yeah. Right, more. Right. Not really. Right, you go, I mean, exactly. So when you're doing it in a home oven, I find the best thing to do is to crank your oven to 500 degrees or as high as it will go an hour in advance. You don't realize you want the heat to come all the way up and stay there and really get yeah. the oven nice and hot. And then you actually want to, if you have a pizza stone, it, it is one of those kitchen appliances or kitchen tools that really does come in handy for things like this and you'll use it to roast chickens mm -hmm. you use it for all kinds of things uh, roast veggies of course you put the pizza stone on the bottom of your oven where it's hottest let it cook in there for an hour and that's gonna be the time when your oven is as close as possible to <laughs> getting it the way it would be if it was straight out of a wood grilled pizza oven right the stone like really holds the heat right it that's what you want to a get a crispy crust yeah, yeah. on that bottom Okay, so let's kick it off because we have a lot of good pizza to eat today and I'm gonna start off, right, I'm ready. I'm so ready to eat pizza all day long. Um, we're gonna kick it off with a really easy to make cast iron skillet pizza. Ooh, cast okay. iron is amazing to make pizza in. I mean, it's amazing for anything. It should be your go-to pan. If you can get one, you can get them really inexpensively. They also retain so much heat, mm -hmm. which is why I love using them to make pizza. Also, your grandchildren and their grandchildren will still have the same pan you buy now. Like, these things last. <laughs> invest, <laughs> right, invest so, in this. Uh, Several lifetimes. Yes. Exactly. So let's look at how to make this. It is super easy. I have a cast iron pizza which starts with store-bought pizza dough. You're going to put it in the skillet. You're going to put it in hot and give it some brown and crispiness on the first side. You mm -hmm. flip it over. And then for one of my favorite toppings, I top it with broccoli, broccoli rabe, actually, mm -hmm. mozzarella, a mixture of sausage and onions. And then I season it with salt and, of course, those red pepper flakes there that Jamaica needs so badly. Mm -hmm. Dollop with... You already have the mozzarella, dollop it with some fresh ricotta, oh. and then you bake it in the oven until it's all nice really and good. bubbly, Woo. and you're gonna serve it with some grated Parmesan, a little drizzle of olive oil as well. And I have one oh, for you. I was, I was say, I was like, if you talked about it like that, did not come out with this, this kitchen. I was having one of those moments where, you know, you watch delicious food made on screen, and you're like, okay, now I need to eat that. What the? We were not gonna be friends anymore if you didn't have this pizza made. I wanna close. You get it? I'm gonna... You take it. Yeah, I will close you the oven. Close that, I have a really happy wow. I don't want you to drop it. Thank you. 
Ooh. Oh my All right, guys, so this is what you want to do. You're just going to do a little bit of olive oil to finish it up. Give it some Because we need fat on the fat. It's <laughs> fat on the fat. And then I like to just grate some Parmesan with a, with a, um, girl. a zester or grater yes. right over top. So now we have three different kinds of cheeses mm -hmm. with that broccoli, Rob, and the sausage. And Do you hear that sizzle? Are you listening to this? It's you. It, you gotta see. It's still the, the cheese. I know the cheese just on melts right on. We'll just it's grab some. Get in there. I gotta oh, taste this thing. No, Ooh, careful. It's good. It's hot. Cooking it's with the, fire. Yes. We need well, to wait a second. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, I want the cheese pulled. So I. But but you know I also don't want to take the toppings off. Here we go. All right. Got it. You don't need those fingerprints, do you? No. Fingers are long abused. There we go. Ooh, ooh. That you Come that on, pizza scene. with the pulp. Okay, please. coming off. Of I it. love it. Oh, right, dive in, dive in. I'll wait for this. Oh, Come on, you, let's see it. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. This is hot. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Here you go. And you see how beautifully brown Thank that crust you. is? All right. Here's the thing mm -hmm. that I love about cast iron pizza. I mean, of course, everything has great flavor, but doing that, cooking the crust on the bottom and then the flip, you get crust, crustiness, that crunch on the yes. bottom, and then also with the toppings. So mm. delicious. The garlicky broccoli rub. Oh, both those cheeses, the sausage. <laughs> so good. The cheese bowl. Look at this cheese bowl. Yeah. <laughs> the great thing about pizza is that it's so versatile. That's why across the country, every region has a different tasty take on this delicacy. So out west, in California, on the West Coast, they are serving one of my favorite styles. It is the California-style personal pizza loaded up with tons of veggies. Gail, I, that sounded just like what you were describing, mm -hmm. too. So fresh, so delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, a Chicago-style pizza, where my husband John is from, they obviously are famous for their deep-dish pizza. It can oh, weigh, get this, up to four pounds because of all that cheese. It is layered, deep, delicious. Oh. Northeast of Chicago, their pizzas have the crispy cheese edges thanks to the pan used in Detroit-style pizza. Mm -hmm. And in New York City, you cannot beat that classic slice on a paper plate. Ooh. So good. Like, there is no more satisfying moment than late night rolling up to, like, a dollar pizza <laughs> slice. It is the most delicious. It's, just like, it's almost like somehow they get mozzarella that has like double the fat content. It's so delicious. You just coined the last 20 years of my life. I will, yeah, big like, time. That is well, that's my favorite thing. Best part. I'm still enjoy. What's your favorite thing. regional slice? What's your What's your move? Mm. I am Chi Town, Chicago. Mm, yeah. Because it's like a meal within one slice. You the can't. first time I ever went back to Chicago with John, I remember you can't going go all in. Was it Maloney? Mahoney's? Uh, Maroney's? <laughs> what's, what's the name? <laughs> Room, what, what is it? Luminati's. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Luminati's. We got this, like, this famous deep dish pizza. We went, we got it. And you know you're trying to be cute. You're like newly dating. You're meeting the family for the first time. I, I was, and also you want to hang. So I downed like a whole slice of this thing and immediately Needless passed day. out on the couch. Like full, it's my house. I live here. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, that's so why bad. Like that is, so much. That's not so a so date night. You kept me around you, though. <laughs> you were asleep. John was mad like it was over. You should ridiculous. never do that. What about you, though? I, I mean, I live in New York. I've been living here for 22 years, and I just, there's nothing I love more than a New York style pizza because mm. I love the thin crust. Mm -hmm. I love the cheese. I love that moment of just going to a New York pizza joint, picking the slice you want, getting it piping hot, covering it in chili flakes and Parmesan, and walking down the street with it. And you fold it? You fold it while you walk? So. I'm going to get a lot of hate mail Oh, come this. on, tell me about that. But, like, here's the thing. I didn't grow up folding my pizza because I moved here from Canada and it wasn't something I did. It's not intuitive for me to do. Well, you don't, I don't want to do it because I want to extend mm -hmm. the eat. If I fold it, it goes by twice as fast. I want to just, you know, enjoy everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's why you get two slices, Daphne. You got <laughs> oh, oh, to get smarter with this one. All right. My favorite is Gail's deep dish, basically deep dish skillet pizza. This, this is, is so I, mean, I also delicious. like it grandma style. Right. Like, I really do. do. I mean, I can, I'll eat it all. Yeah. All Whatever right. You want to give well, don't eat it all because we still have more to go. Because coming up, Chef Rocco Despirito is joining yeah. our pizza party, and we're showing you why a giant sheet pan pizza should be what you're making for dinner tonight. But first, here's a pizza <laughs> probably you've never had before. It's my pizza pot pie. Ooh, I got creative.
Like something you saw on the show today? We're dishing all the details on the good list. All the recipes, important tips, and tricks, all in one place. So stay tuned until the end of the show when we'll share the good list QR code. You can scan to send it all right to your phone. Want to know what's for dinner tonight? Gooey, gooey, deep dish baked ziti. Hello, handsome. It's the classic your family loves. Gorgeous and creamy. But with a twist. It's sort of genius. Talk ziti to me, girl. And we're dishing with Empire star Tyronda Jones. Cooking is arts, darling. And she's taking a classic recipe to the next level. The most decadent deviled eggs I have ever seen. Dishes Ultimate Pizza Party. Joining us now is a chef who knows a thing or two about pizza, Rocco Despirito. Woo! Come on! Hey! 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 Hello, Hi. Hello, Hi. Nice to see you, Greg. Get a hug. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Nice congratulations. Nice congratulations. Been too I'll long. Take, I'll take that too long. Oh, congratulations. Where are you want me? Right here? Right, right Terrific. Here. Cool. Sandwich. I, right nice. Here. You came for the pizza show. I did, of course. Of yeah. course. And you look Big great as always. Pizza. Thank love you so it. much. Yeah. So I love that you wore this was, suit. This was in the wardrobe door. I just grabbed it. I wasn't going to wear that today. I'll be back before you leave. So you know a lot about pizza. I know a few things about pizza, yeah. From a from a very young age. I just learned this about you. Your very first job. Tell us about it. Yeah, I was a child chef. I worked illegally for the first four four years of my career. No way. Yeah, I was that old, Brilliant. actually, oh, when I started God. cooking. It was basically on a dare from my mom. I wanted to buy Kiss, um, Kiss's album called Love Gun, and my mom thought, yes. there's no <laughs> way I'm giving you money to buy that <laughs> trash. And yeah. she's like, if you want to buy that, go get a job. And I was 11, and she probably thought I would go, okay, sorry, Mom. You know? yes. And I was like, I can work? Cool. Right. So the next day, I walked up and down the block and went into stores one after the other, and, and a guy named Sal said, We'll give you a job. You can work here. And it was a pizzeria. And, and that's how I started my career. And I loved, wow. loved every minute of it ever since. Wow. So, look at yeah. you now. So you, no. I you showed now, right? I love that. <laughs> Did he teach you how I to do so. the twirl she... and everything? Like, that's what No, he are. wouldn't let me touch the pies. I, I did <laughs> fountain <laughs> soda, <laughs> gravy <laughs> cheese, opening cans of tomato sauce. Touching okay. the pies is like, you know, a revered thing. Of course. Yeah. As it should be, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. Well, right. it'll you're be... supposed to work your way up to that. It'll be just like you're working at, because we're going to put you to work today. So we got you working. Not afraid of work. I mean, now everyone doesn't have access to a pizza oven like a little yeah, Rocco did back yeah. in the day, but we can still make a gooey, cheesy pizza that is, has a perfectly crisp crust and it's at home and you're going to make it using a sheet pan. Everyone has oh, a sheet fun. pan, right? Okay. And I'm talking about an eggplant and tomato sheet pan <laughs> pizza with not just one, but two delicious cheeses. Yum. Everyone, mm. all right. So, good. so now we're starting off, we have our uh, pizza dough in a sheet pan and we par baked it off and you can kind of see, you see these little indentations. I've pierced it with a fork so that when we baked it off, it didn't get puffy and get the bubbles in it because we want a nice flat surface. And the tip here is to put lots of olive oil at the bottom yes. because that's gonna help the crispy crust develop. Yeah. So yes, do not be very generous with your um, oil. So can we're we, going to do, go ahead. Give them just a quick tip about stretching into the pan too. This yes. is store bought dough. And that's where your patience comes into play. Right. Because once you have to, first off, make sure it's at room temperature. You can't do cold dough. It's not going to stretch. And you really just have to take your time, try to push it out into the corners. If it starts to shrink back, that means she's not ready. She does not want to be touched. Oh, do not touch her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything with me is a her poor play. Yeah. Here that we is. go. Okay. Be respectful, play. hands off, let her sit for a minute, and then you just kind of glide the dough out. As it warms up to room temperature, then it will start to stretch, and she will give, okay? So... We're starting off with our parbeck dough, and we're going to put ch some cheese down first. So talk about that, because that is counterintuitive. Yes, yeah, someone at home is yelling at me, saying, why are you putting the what cheese do down first? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, so putting down the cheese first builds a nice barrier so that all of your toppings, your, the sauce doesn't, like, sog down that 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 crust. I'm like, what am I doing? Put all this cheese. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, saying, like, I'm, I'm trying to put some in your pocket for I'm like trying to you. Yeah, you. What am I doing? Yeah. Okay, now, Rocco, if sure. you will jump in, because yeah. this is not a, a dress to dollop sauce, so you no will problem. do that, because we don't want to get messy. No so you just yeah. kind of dollop your sauce, yeah. 
Like the, that? All, yes, okay. of course. Yeah. And this takes is, orders very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a trained chef. Yes, I can, I anything you tell me. Absolutely. To do. Chef. Look good? Uh, look at that right. perfect division. Outstanding. Amazing. And then just do a little Same bit of oregano. Yeah. We'll top it off with a little bit of fresh oregano. And fresh is good, right? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Rocco's hands look too clean. What else? I mean, come <laughs> All right, so let's push this down the line, and we're going to start layering off okay. with our oh. tomatoes and our eggplant. Ladies, I'll follow you. We're doing a little dance here. And this also Sounds all good. has a lot to do with moisture, the way that you're mm -hmm. layering this pizza, right? Because moisture is sort of the enemy of pizza. You don't yes. want soggy pizza. You want extra crispy no. pizza. So I love that you did that cheese tip. And then also I'm noticing, first of all, you've pre-cooked, obviously you've roasted in the oven your eggplant with just salt and pepper and olive oil. <laughs> and we pre-salted the tomatoes a little bit. Oh, that was one. nice. <laughs> We're playing solitaire. So I love it. So good. But 100%, exactly as you were saying, the enemy of delicious crisp pizza is too much moisture. And actually, that's one thing, and we should point out with the vegetables we just laid on here, we had beautiful roasted Pretty eggplant. Cooked. Yeah, yeah. Super And important. the tomatoes, again, so they're pre salted yeah. a little bit to mm -hmm. draw out some of that moisture. You can that's pre salt really them, leave them to sit for a minute, and then just dab them with a paper towel to get some of that water out of them, because obviously Smart. tomatoes have so uh, much water uh, before you cook them. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, this looks good enough to so eat. It looks amazing. But yeah. it's not ready yet. We have to finish baking it off. So you're going to put this in your oven on the bottom rack and so let I'm gonna move help you let me help shimmy you around you here okay. we'll put this down here the very bottom, bottom rack also important right because that's where it's really hot yes that that way you get that that crispy bottom edge and oh, okay mm. Tony wow. you gotta go in for wow. the smell just like Look hit me see you Rocco you Getting come to our kitchen Goodness. we feed you that. nicely All right. Right? Wow. Look at this beautiful Amazing. pizza Come on, pie. Get on a sheet pan pizza. let alone and I mean we could make it at home any night of the week right Mm -hmm. For sure, and looks like there's going to be enough for leftovers. Which Sh is would you like to do the honors? Yeah, Can I just do a little, 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 yeah, little yeah, top. Take it out. Red Light. pepper flakes, Light. my Here kind of girl. Let me grab. Yeah. Let me take this out of the way. Okay. Look at uh, this pizza party. This is Look at that go. beautiful. Hold on, hold on, guys. It sounds good. Oh. It's crispy. Oh wait, what is that? What were you oh, wait, just doing right there? I was just letting it hit the board, and so you can hear that it's crispy. Yeah, so food sounds a certain way when it's right, you know. Yes, oh, wow. that is. I'm sure right. you know this. You the cook sizzle. so much. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's it's so important yeah. to use all your senses, right? Like Listen it's and that's what makes you more of an intuitive cook. It makes it more sure, fun and gluten sure. free. Definitely a multi-sensory experience. You could see I was struggling a little to cut it because it was so crispy. Look mm. at how crispy. You know that what I love the most? Is. So delicious. That the tomatoes. Ooh. Held their Ooh. shape. And, and they're a little bit oven roasted mm -hmm. yes like they yeah. are shriveled and dried a love that concentrates the flavor That's of the true. fresh tomato Perfect. so much all right we're going to continue uh. eating this delicious pizza thank you so much wow. mm -hmm. coming up Rocco's got a keto friendly meat lovers oh, yeah. twist I love this on this delicious recipe you've got to see it everybody deserves to enjoy an ooey gooey slice of pizza don't go away <laughs> We're cooking up a classic your family loves. Ooey gooey deep dish baked ziti. Hello, Ansel. But with a twist. It's sort of genius. Talk ziti to me, girl. Welcome back to The Good Dish. Chef and author of Rocco's Keto Comfort Food Diet, Rocco Despirito is here with us, and he is here for our ultimate pizza party. He's going to show us his keto-friendly twist on the sheet pan pizza. Yeah, Amazing. I am. I'm here for it. All right. I'm excited about this, and I have a confession, Rocco. Uh-oh. I die with you. You are one of my secret chef crushes like oh my goodness and for a long time like i've been watching you <laughs> don't get bashful now but it's like my chef crush is like i see a chef and i just admire the way you do what you do you got this kitchen swag about yourself so i'm gonna ask you this question impartially thank I'm you like, so much really i mean really like nice I've been, and my dream is to have <laughs> all of my crushes here so now. you're you're my first that my chef crush to come on the show but like you are looking really good and you look happy like tell us the secret like look what, who i'm hanging with are well you yes you are, are, a, are the best are in a good place Today. But you, you're like, I see your, your book and you're like, you're on your, your social media. Like, you really look happy. You look good. And so it's like, tell us what got you into the focus on keto and why, like, comfort keto foods? Like, why I is have that? To thank the people who make those filters because it's working. <laughs> it really is working. I finally discovered one that works for me. I'm kidding. Excellent. <laughs> uh, what made me got into keto? Keto lifestyle is actually something I was introduced to. 
about 20 years ago. I was training for a triathlon. I needed to lose a lot of weight really fast. And so I, I tried Atkins, which is, you know, the original keto diet, uh, sort of. There's a lot of controversy, guys. Let's not get into it. But <laughs> it's a low-carb, high-fat diet. And uh, the idea is to consume less than 20 to 30 grams of carbs a day. And it turns out it works really well for rapid weight loss. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily a lifestyle you can maintain for, you know, many, many, many years. So I thought, let's turn it into that lifestyle by taking the dishes we all know and love, like pizza and pasta and chili, you know, Philly cheesesteak and things like that, and make them keto versions of themselves, which is to say I reduce the carbs to 10 grams or less per serving, like this. Wow. Like this wow. pizza is That's 10 really grams smart. of carbs or less per serving. Delicious. Well, it's so good. I mean, look, anything that works for you to feel like you're thriving, feel good in your skin, I love that. For sure, And yeah. honestly, this looks super delicious, whether you're keto or not. But Rocco is going to help us make a keto-friendly meat lovers cauliflower yes. pizza. Show us how do we make it at home. For sure. So this is literally one of the least expensive vegetables out there. Um, and all you have to do is grate it and pre-cook it. I pre-cook it in a microwave. You can do it in a pan. Most here. important tip here is after, the, after you grate it and cook it is to squeeze out the water. Get an and, old t-shirt. Yep, exactly. Old t-shirt, <laughs> uh, cheesecloth, whatever you have around, and make sure the water squeezes out so that when you mix it together all the other ingredients, you have this dry batter that will turn into a nice crust. Again, so, about moisture. Mm -hmm. You don't want so much moisture exactly. in your pizza because you want to crisp it up, right? Exactly. Correct. Beautiful. So, so what's this, like a head or two of cauliflower? That's about a head of cauliflower. Okay, And nice. in that goes uh, beaten egg. Beautiful. Yeah, and we'll just mix it up. And again, we're basically making a cauliflower batter. I know it's not going to look like a traditional pizza dough, but mm. it's not supposed to. That was Parmigiano Reggiano. This is mozzarella, oregano, mm. and rosmarino, and Keep talking. Thyme, I'm taking it all in. Yeah. <laughs> all these Italian herbs. To me. Keep going. Don't forget salt <laughs> and pepper. Salt. Everything gets salt and pepper. And then, like we discussed earlier, you're, you're going to lay it out in the pan and push it around until it's flat, about a quarter inch thick, a half an inch thick. And make sure the pan is hot. Right. Super important. I right? found this interesting yeah. when I saw your recipe, Rocco, because you start with a hot pan. Yes. So how do you then press it in? Is that an issue? What are the tips to doing you that have well? To be a little bit careful because you will burn you burn yourself. But I'm not talking about smoking hot, but you know, definitely hotter than room temperature and without question not cold. Very important. So yeah. the cheese that starts to surfaces. melt and bind. Yeah, so and there so there's a caramelization effect immediately. Amazing. Or a Maillard reaction if you yes. want. And then oh, you end up talk chefy to me. I like that. And okay, then very you end good. Up. Hey, he's mine. <laughs> I, I, he's all I got it. I got it. Shot yourself. <laughs> and then, you know, of course, a little tomato sauce is always a good idea. A little mozzarella. Okay. Jumped and in. crumbled cooked yeah. sausage. Crumbled cooked sausage, exactly. And it could be anything you want. Of course, you can sneak some vegetables in here again if you want. Peppers. Those right? are allowed. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Those okay, are definitely good. Allowed. Thank you. So it's very, it's pretty confusing because vegetables obviously are a carb. But they're good carbs. So cauliflower, brassicas, those kinds of veggies, they, they have tons of nutrition or at least some fiber. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think generally speaking, the more you can cook for yourself, which the show obviously hopes to give you lots of ideas to do, the better off you will always be. For sure. For sure. Okay, let's get it in the oven. Mm, here. Uh, it's going to go into a pretty hot oven. And, you know, bottom shelf is a good idea always because the heat comes from the bottom unless you're using the broiler. And uh, I know the book says... Watch out the there. The book yeah. says 375, I believe, but... You can do this low temp to set the crust, 300, 325, or really high temp if you're having good luck with the crust. And that's what it should look like wow. when it's done. It's pretty cool, right? Wow. Beautiful. Wait, can, before wait, we do no. anything to yes. this, are there, are, wait, come back, come back, yes. come back. You've got to see the pools, the, the pepperoni pools. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> this is the greatest thing that, that ever happens thing on a right pizza. Now. That's right, yeah. Pepperoni pool, yes. just an infinity pool just to dive yourself <laughs> into. <laughs> Welcome. The pepperoni cups. Oh. Has become such a Should we important. slice it out on here? Yeah, sure. Pepperoni cups. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm already going. So if you, I'm if just you go to any like, like great pizza by the slice joint in yes. New York City yes. right now, the pepperoni cups are a big thing. Okay. All right. So we're just gonna take. Oh it yeah, out. just yeah. a little slice. Oh, so, perfect. So sometimes on a cauliflower crust, it doesn't hold together. Don't bug out. It's okay. It's gonna be fine. You can do this kind of thing and just serve it like that, and it'll be totally Beautiful. fine. Beautiful. I have a taste like pizza, I mean, so I have no <laughs> problem. It's beyond that because I'm already like pretty much done with my slice. <laughs> Don't <But> watch me. <laughs> <laughs> it is, like people's here cauliflower crust. I love that you, you ate right off the board. I did. You love it I or you did. hate it. This has a great bite to it. I still get the crispy edges, mm. that crust that yeah. I, I get with pizza, but then it's 
I, it's not overwhelming with cauliflower. I'm tasting pizza. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't even know that this is a cauliflower crust had I not been admiring you cook it from afar. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad you don't think. <laughs> it is so good. You don't, know, you don't think about vegetable. You think pure pizza heaven here. Oh, Rocco, yeah. this is delicious. You're going to eat a lot. Well, thank you. Yeah, all your childhood cauliflower PTSD should not come into play here. It won't <laughs> taste like that, I promise. No, no. This and so many more delicious recipes in your new cookbook. Guys, Rocco's Keto Comfort Food Diet, it is available now. And be sure to check out Rocco's website, RoccoDespirito.com, yes, for you. even more delicious recipes. Thank you so much for being with us and all your delicious food. We love seeing you. All right, you guys, coming up, we are heading to the test kitchen to show you uh, the hacks that will change the way you look at frozen pizza forever. Oh, you have a test Exciting. Kitchen. We have frozen pizza. Hungry for more dish? There's so much more on GoodDishTV.com. Recipes, tips, beauty, style, and a sneak peek into what's next on the menu. Closed captioning for The Good Dish, provided by... The Good Dish Test Kitchen, where we get a little nerdy about testing recipes so you don't have to. And today, the Good Dish Test Kitchen cracks the frozen pizza code. Welcome back to the Good Dish. Today in the Test Kitchen, we are going to hack your favorite frozen pizza. I know that sounds a little crazy, but I'm telling you, we're going to make it great. It is quite possible. So, <laughs> we are taking the typical frozen pizza and turning it into ultra cheesy pizza rolls. All right, you got to see it to believe it. I mean, it, look at all of the cheesy goodness. Now, this hack won us over because it has everything we need, the crispiness and the cheesiness in every bite. And it feels like a whole new meal out of that pizza sitting way in the back of your freezer. You know where it is. Pull it out because you won't believe how simple it is to make, okay? So you'll preheat your oven to 400 degrees and you'll lightly grease a pie pan with some olive oil or spray. And then you have your pizza crust. Now, I will say it's best to use a thin crust pizza and you'll let it sit out on your counter defrost a while because you want to have a crust that has a little bit of a give. So any crust that may be that thick crust pizza may not work with this, but you see how I can roll this up and it's so easy. And any type of pizza you want to use, whatever toppings, whatever's on your pizza in your freezer, this is what you do. This is spinach and artichoke pizza, yes, which it I is. have to say looks really good. And I mean, you just roll it up, you think like burrito or cinnamon roll, whatever, and then we'll take a sharp knife and then you will cut it into about <laughs> one inch, one and a half inch rolls, and then you'll place it in your dish and it stays together perfectly. You put I love it in that. there. Beautiful. So, so easy. Put it cut side up. And, I mean, come on, frozen pizza. Can yeah, you believe I can. that? I mean, but also, <laughs> you have to remember the cheese. Cheese is integral here. The chef's secret is to have mozzarella and grated Parmesan at the ready that you're going to top on it after you've cooked it a little bit so Just that you get that cheesy, gooey cheese bowl. Now, we have tested many cheeses, and I yes. really think that the mozzarella with parm combo is the best. See, I'm just dumping it right on top. Love, Lots of Parmesan, too, there. because pizza is, for me, not pizza without cheese. <laughs> it's bread. <laughs> um, and then this goes back in the oven for about 15 minutes. Remove it and then you can be ready for the cheese pull. Are you ready? You want to get it nice and browned? Serve this is piping, piping hot, hot, so yeah. be careful. <laughs> exactly. In unison, piping hot. <laughs> and serve it up on the side with a little tomato sauce, marinara sauce. Mm -hmm. The best way to go. Can we get her out of there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this is ideal for a new dinner, like take on pizza, or an appetizer. If you're having a gathering with people, it's like, don't serve the flat pizza. Roll it up, and I mean, they're going to be like, whoa, where did you get this from? This is amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, go for it. I'll sauce you, babe. Oh, thank there you go. very much. And a little for me. I'm excited about this. Right, go right in. I mean, this is definitely something I would never think to do on my own. Mm. That's why we do it in the test kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's great. Perfect. All right. Delicious. I'm making a mess, but it's okay. Stick around because when we come back, she's making a mess too. Daphne reveals her best hair secrets that will save you a trip to the salon. Oh, mm. yes. <laughs> we 
are back with tricks you can use to make your life easier, a little more beautiful, a little more fun. And we are tackling the question, can I make my hair look as good as what I see on Instagram without being a hairstylist, <laughs> which none of us are. From curls to scalp health to volume, we've got you covered. So you guys have seen what my hair looks like first thing in the morning. You guys obviously see me rolling mm -hmm. here. You guys have seen me on Instagram because I do that first thing in the morning <laughs> for fun. Um, but you know, one of the questions I get asked most frequently is, about the curls that I do because people have seen what my hair looks like naturally mm -hmm. and it's not the way that I do when it when it's done. And one of the questions um, is, you know, sort of how to get the curls that I do and how I get the volume at the front of my face in particular. I have this crazy widow's peak here that normally speaking, my hair falls into my face. So I'm gonna give you all the tricks and tips today for how to keep it back. Um, and I am always on the hunt for great ways to get that great hair without all the fuss. I need it to happen mm -hmm. fast for kids. They do not give me a lot of time to get my hair done. <laughs> so here is a trick to help you get gorgeous Instagrammable curls and fake a blowout. I'm gonna show you how I take this and turn it into this. So I split my hair down the middle and then I always start from the back. I take about an inch and then I have my one inch barrel here. And then I actually am gonna roll it over the barrel this time and I will roll it under the barrel sometimes to give it a little bit of texture. I hold it for 10, it's in like a single layer. Okay, it comes out looking like this. So you kind of just pull it down a little bit. Okay, since last time I went over the barrel, this time I'm gonna go under and then hold it down and try to twist it as close to your head without burning your fingertips as possible. That is the hair I dream of, but I have to tell you, like, I know nothing about curling irons. I'm kind of scared of them. True. And I have stick straight hair, but I don't want to use one myself. Tell me what you're looking for in getting a curling iron, because I wouldn't know where to start even buying it, let alone using it. Sure. No, you know, I mean, so much of what I do is honestly trial and error. I love to test things. I try things that I see online, but also having had the benefit of working with great professional stylists on TV and elsewhere, it's like I'm always picking up their little tips and tricks for me. So that over-under technique is actually to build volume and to build stay with the curls so that it doesn't just all fall into one sort of like Goldilocks loop like this is one example of the tip. But another thing that I've learned is that the barrel size that you you choose because I'm like I actually have really straight really thick really coarse hair and so I use the curling iron to straighten my hair too and kind of smooth it and for that I love to go for like a big two inch barrel like what I have here this is this is actually genuinely very hot um, I don't know why we needed to we could have faked it but you know, it is really hot um, but this is a great thing if you don't know how to do a blowout, which I admit all this time later, I still can't master a blowout. So I fake it by curling my hair with a giant barrel like this and it smooths the hair shaft, makes it really shiny, gives it great volume. But before you even get to the gorgeous curls, you gotta take good care of your scalp. It's Absolutely. the soil from which your hair grows. <laughs> Tell us about your amazing scalp care trick. Well, I do this uh, maybe about twice a month, maybe. Maybe every other month. Depends on what my hair is doing. It depends on the season, mm -hmm. if it's a little drier or not. But I'm all about the hair to help stimulate the hair growth, wake up those follicles, and give it a little extra moisture. And man, woman, any type of, any texture of hair, we all need this in our lives. And it's very simple. I'll take a coffee mug and I'll fill it with water and pop it in the microwave for about a minute just to get it hot and then I have olive oil and I have it in this glass bottle of course you can put it in any heat resistant plastic bottle anything that can dispense easily put it in that hot water and let it sit for about three to five minutes to warm up that oil like and warming a, a baby bottle that's exactly what it reminds me of. you're such a mom you know exactly Sorry. how to do yes. this no and you'll, you'll put it in there for a few minutes and make sure when it comes out test it on like your hand or something because you don't want to put piping hot oil <laughs> to your scalp don't right? ever say that Jamika told you to do that right <laughs> so then you'll take like a pointy tooth comb or you can even use your fingers and section through your hair and you'll start at your hairline and go all the way to the back and put it directly to your scalp and that just kind of gets everything going you can give yourself a a uh, nice head massage, mm. really soothing. I wrap my hair in a towel and let it sit for about 20 minutes or so and then just wash it out and style as normal. And you'll definitely see a difference. Get rid of those wiry, like wispy hairs, those frizzies, flyaways, help with dandruff, all of that stuff. So definitely a great way. It's in your pantry, use it. So if you need a little help with the volume here at the hair root, this is my go-to trick, guys. I absolutely, oh. this, 
This is my secret. I'm giving it to you now. Will you hold this for me of for course. one second, please? I want to see this. Grab a one or one and a half inch barrel, okay? Hold it up a little higher so I don't burn my forehead. Oh, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. Go. Thank you so much. <laughs> and here's what you're going to do. You're going to grab like one inch sections and take your barrel and just loop. Like, Ooh, just like whoa. this. Oh, watch it. Doesn't go. hurt? No. Nope. Looks like I'm putting it on your skin. No, I'm not. That's just my hair. Okay. <laughs> um, but you just rub it underneath. I mean, we're talking like two seconds, just quick, quick, quick. And it creates this natural lift. Sometimes I'll go right here just to sort of boost it also. You guys, this lasts all day long. It lifts it off my face. It creates such a nice face frame. Just work it quickly around the hairline. I do this, it takes me less than 30 seconds, and it just gives me this great, like, finished, quick, volumized hair at the front of my face. When I tell you this is the number one question I get asked, I am not lying. Now you have the trick. It also gets rid of any indentations at the root from when you're sleeping. Sometimes you get, like, a little flatness here. It's amazing. All right, try the trick at home. Let us know what you think. We'll be right back. We're cooking up a classic your family loves. Ooey gooey deep dish baked ziti. Hello, handsome. But with a twist. It's that sort of genius. Talk ziti to me, girl. Sometimes we all need a break from work, the kids, running errands even if that means sneaking off for a few lovely private minutes. Now, if you can steal a little moment of me time just for yourself to de-stress at home, outside, what, how are you spending it? What are you doing with that precious moment? Hmm. I mean, I, I have a, lit, a long list of what I'd like to do. I mean, I do try to just get outside. I work from home so many other days if I'm not here with you right. guys. And sometimes I can find that I start working in the morning and I don't get a break and then it's dinner time and then it's put the kids to bed time. So if I can get outside and do a 10 minute walk myself and clear my head, that's one thing I do. Very good. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. A hike, a walk in the neighborhood, just feel nature, take it all in, just kind of settle myself. Just be quiet for a minute. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of noise in our, in our lives. Just be quiet for a second. Walk around. Definitely. Just to I put your feet approve. up sometimes also. If yes. you go outside, sit on a bench and just like stick your feet up. Just let that breeze <laughs> blow in your hair. And yes. Don't talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, take a look at how some of our viewers spend those precious minutes of alone time. Shh. Yes. Shh. Don't tell anyone I'm in here. If I have to come and hide in my closet so that I can have a few minutes to play my phone games, that's what I'm gonna do. It is so important that I find me time, even if that's in my bathroom. I sneak away into my office, and my phone, and I just play some games. <laughs> these, these, these viewers, they're onto something. The bathroom is your office. Sometimes you're like, don't bother me in here for one second. Although I always get my kids, they're like at the door. You know, the minute, the minute I go in there, they they're can like, Hello. smell you while <laughs> like sniffing, scratching at the door like a cat or something. And then they're always in there with me. It's fine. It's it's all good. But I have to say, there is something, you know, just about that reset that you give yourself that makes you better able to go on and take the whole rest of your day, whatever it is that just makes you feel like you relaxed and refueled. And today we have a free game that you can play on your phone right now. It's called Solitaire Grand Harvest, and it's a fun and relaxing game for every busy person out there who just needs that moment of me time. And I love this. It has a farm theme where you get to grow fruits and veggies and all kinds of yummy crops, which is so fun. We have two players here on behalf of our partner, Solitaire Grand Harvest, Desiree. <laughs> there she is. Now tell us, when did you play? I've been playing for two years. And I, what I love about it is I'll take the time in between my meetings to be stressed, relax, and just unwind. Um, I also use it as a reward at the end of my long, busy work day to just zone out and separate. Oh, we all need a good zone out every now and again. Mm -hmm. Dee, there's yeah. Dee. Hey, Dee. Hi. <laughs> now tell us how long have you been playing Solitaire Grand Harvest and what keeps you coming back to this game? Well, I, um, I started playing before the pandemic. And then when we went on lockdown, I started playing a lot more. And so it's just my way to relax. Um, I come from a family of gamers. My husband and my adult kids love to play games. So they were really excited that mom has her own game. And I just really <laughs> love the, the way they innovate in the game, keep 
uh, new adding new things and new ways to win. And just the graphics and the scenery just are very relaxing for me. I love that. Dee sounds like she'd fit right in in our family. Competitive, <laughs> ready to play at any time. I love that. And this is, it's love a it. lot of fun love to play. It. It's, there's so many different levels and layers to the game. I tried playing, and I can see why you want to play every day. Now, I hope you both are up for a challenge to play each other and show us how it's done. We'll see who can finish their solitaire round first. So grab your phones. Are you ready? Go! Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on! So in case you guys need a refresher on how the game is played, okay. what you want to do is pile up cards in sequential order by going up or down with your numbers, and you're going to collect coins and power up through thousands of challenging levels, all while building out your very own farm. It's a really fun new way to play solitaire and keep your brain active while you just relax and rejuvenate. I love it. Come on, we're going to show you the winner. Who's winning? We are. I'm trying to get there. Oh, she's focused. Oh, I like how expressive she is come while she's playing. On, come on, come on. I could watch her play it. All come day. on! Oh, oh no! no. D! Oh, so good. D, you got it. Okay. Congratulations. That's right. It was a good competitor. Good competitor. Very good. Solid effort. Very good. All right, so if you or a loved one are in need of a fun, relaxing game or break, go to the App Store or Google Play and download Solitaire Grand Harvest for free, and that's not all. For first-time players, you're going to get a welcome bonus of 20,000 free credits. Wow. Special thanks to our partner, Solitaire Grand Harvest. Go ahead and give it a try. I love all the graphics, too. Awesome. Really colorful, fun, and bright. You cannot miss the hot and fresh delivery of the good list with all of today's pizza recipes. Coming up next. Dish. We've got our sheet pan pizza, delicious crispy piping, hot, and some vino. Oh. And life is very good. Uh, Refreshing. A toast to you, ladies. Life to you. Well Thank done. You for such a good cool <laughs> day of pizza. Agreed. Pizza. And Rocco. And Rocco oh, yeah. and wine and games. <laughs> so good. Mm. Awesome day, ladies. All right. So now it's a good time for the good list. So see that that QR code on your screen. Open up your camera app and hold it up to the phone. Hold your phone up to the screen right there. You got it. And it will take you right to the recipes, shopping lists, and more from today's show. And you can also head to GoodDishTV.com to get it all. So on the good list today, the answer to the question, what's for dinner? Well, we've got the recipe for the ultimate sheet pan pizza for a crowd. A cheesy eggplant. It's so delicious. And all of the great recipes from today's show are on the good list. Yes. So good. I know what I'm having for dinner and lunch. <laughs> and maybe breakfast, too. <laughs> that would be a bad. <laughs> all right, you guys. We, cheers to us. Cheers, cheers to you. We will see you next time for more good food and good dish.